Life Audio. Welcome to Christian Natural Health with naturopathic Dr. Lauren DeVille. Christian Natural Health is the podcast on how to get and stay healthy God's way. You'll hear topics on nutrition, exercise, sleep, avoiding toxicity, meditating on scripture, what supplements to take, stress management, defeating anxiety and worry, how to reconcile Eastern medicine approaches with Christianity, and a whole lot more. Now, here's your host, Dr. Lauren. Today I'm going to be meditating on the concept of waiting on the Lord. So the scripture says a lot about seeking the Lord and getting wisdom from him on the direction he wants you to go. But what about that most dreaded in-between stage when you're praying for wisdom and getting nothing and no doors seem to be opening and you feel unsettled, like you know your time in a particular circumstance or life stage is short, but you've not yet been released? In a word, what about waiting? So patience is a fruit of the Spirit, but it comes as the result of a process. Paul lists the fruit that we bear when we're walking with God's Spirit as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control in Galatians 5, 22-23. Peter gives a similar list, but he doesn't call them fruit. His list looks a lot looks like this in 2 Peter uh, 1, 5-7. Number one, add to your faith goodness. This makes sense because without faith, we can't even become God's kids. So you have to start with that. Faith is the seed that produces the fruit of goodness. In the Old Testament, God started by giving the Israelites the law. They didn't understand why they were doing what they were doing, but the law produced goodness, meaning they weren't killing each other and cheating on their spouses and that sort of thing. And then number two, and according to First Peter, and to goodness, you add knowledge. God didn't just want them to stop there, though. He wanted the Israelites to know him, not just to obey a set of rules. God wanted them to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with their God, Micah 6, 8. Goodness, therefore, leads to knowledge, knowledge of the Lord. And then to knowledge, we're to add self-control. Now that we know what God asks us to do and we know God himself, we need the ability to control ourselves in order to do what he's asking of us. But we don't have the ability to control ourselves unless he gives it to us. Remember Paul talking about how he... We used to continually do what he did not want to do, Romans seven fifteen to 20. Instead, we get the fruit of self-control by getting to know the Holy Spirit, which is why Peter lists it after knowledge. So knowledge is the seed that produces the fruit of self-control. And to self-control, we're to add perseverance. We may have learned to subjugate the desires of the moment for the longer-term goal, but what happens when the longer-term goal looks really far away, like it's never going to happen? That's why we need perseverance. The word implies a struggle. It's suffering without quitting. It's hard, but we stick it out. The writer of Hebrews says you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And that's uh, Hebrews 10 verse 36. And to perseverance, godliness. Notice that the corresponding fruit to perseverance is patience. While the world, while, while the word perseverance implies a struggle, the word patience implies rest. You're not struggling anymore. You know that God is going to come through. Perseverance is the seed, and eventually it bears the fruit of patience. Once you've got that, once you're in rest, you become godly. This was one of the key traits that set Jesus apart. When the storm blew up, while the rest of the disciples were freaking out, he was sleeping on the boat. He said they were going to get to the other side, and he knew they were going to. He didn't have to persevere through the storm anymore. He was in rest. He was godly. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Paul lists kindness after godliness. Now that you're in rest, you're not so worried about meeting your own needs anymore. You know God's got you covered, and you can wait peacefully for him to come through. Now you have energy to spare, and you can use it to see and joyfully meet the desires and needs of those around you. The fruit of kindness is joy, because it feels pretty great to help others. And then to brotherly kindness, love. This is the ultimate destination, to sow love into the lives of others as we have received it from God. Freely you have received, freely give, says Matthew, it it says in Matthew 10, verse 8. What this tells me is that we can't just pray for patience and get it in the same way that you can't just pray for a PhD and get it without putting in the necessary time and effort. It happens as a result of a process. That's how God set it up. We have to first believe God and then follow after him, then get to know him, and then we gain his power to control ourselves and persevere, even in the face of hardship or long delays. Once we learn how to do this, we bear the fruit of patience. That's when we can sleep in the boat, as it were. We're not worried about the circumstances. Now we can walk by faith and not by sight, Second Corinthians 5, 7, because we know it's going to work out just fine in the end. So David, for example, was waiting, was anointed to be king when he was 17. Then the current king, Saul, got understandably jealous and tried to kill him, so David was on the run for 13 years at least. Almost anybody else would have given up long before that, but David had this principle down. He knew God would come through if he waited for God to act, and God always did. 
And then David wrote in the Psalms, Psalm 5, 3, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. He wrote in Psalm 27, verse 14, Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Psalm 33, verse 20, We will we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalm 37, verse 7, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. Psalm 38, verse 15, Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God. Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. Psalm 130, verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Psalm 130, verse 6, I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Personally, I hate waiting. I kind of hate anything slow. I walk fast. I eat fast. Some people say I talk too fast. If I wasn't a naturopath, I'd be all about microwaves. But James says that we should rejoice when we face trials, including delays, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. James 1.3. There's that word again. And perseverance is the seed that produces the fruit of patience. Notice that all the fruit before patience are about us. They're about our growth in faith, in knowledge, and in controlling ourselves. But patience is the one that allows us to start producing for others. Godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. That's where God wants us. So James goes on to say that perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1 verse 4. In other words, not lacking any of the, fr- the other fruits of the Spirit. But it means more than that, too. Those fruits of the Spirit also bear physical results in our lives. For example, Abraham's patience eventually bore the fruit of Isaac, Hebrews 6 verse 15. The farmer who patiently waits for the appropriate season will eventually bear the fruit of a harvest, James 5 7. Had the farmer tried to reap prematurely, he would not have had a harvest at all. He absolutely had to be patient, recognizing the season he was in and doing the work associated with it, Proverbs 20 verse 4 and Ecclesiastes 3 verse 2. The same is true for us. God reminds us not to despise the day of small beginnings, Zechariah 4, verse 10. Everything great started out small. We all start out as babies. Every harvest begins with a seed. Solomon reminds us not to try to get rich quick, for instance, because it will become a curse in the end. Instead, he says that if you gather money little by little, you will make it grow, Proverbs 13. He says to build what you already have and not to tear it down, Proverbs 14. He says, whatever your hands find to do, you should do it with all your might, Ecclesiastes 9. He reminds us that our part is to do the possible, but we must leave it to God to do the impossible, that is, to bring victory, Proverbs 21. We do not want you to become lazy. This is Hebrews 6, verse 12. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Are you looking for a holistically minded healthcare practitioner who truly treats root cause rather than symptom suppression? Unfortunately, even in the alternative healing professions, this isn't a given. That's why I've created wholehealthdoctor.com, a resource to help connect patients to healthcare practitioners in their area who share a root cause philosophy. Alternatively, most of the practitioners listed also practice telehealth. So if there isn't anyone local to you, you can still find a great practitioner to help you regain optimal health. Go to wholehealthdoctor.com. That's whole healthdr.com, type in your location or adjust the specialty that you're looking for and find the practitioner who's right for you. Thanks for listening to Christian Natural Health. This show is run by you, so please write in with topic and guest suggestions for future shows. For more great content, subscribe to Dr. Lauren's blog at www.drlaurendeville.com or follow her on Facebook or Twitter at Dr. Lauren DeVille. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to share it with your friends and give us a five-star rating in iTunes. It really helps us to stand out so other people can discover great content as well. Have a great week and God bless you.